forces ceased using a secret tunnel as a civil war bakery. Then there's this touch of Nevada story for you that I found particularly fascinating. It comes from a newspaper that you probably don't read that we get in a little town where I live called Pahrump, Nevada. It's a little newspaper called the Gateway Gazette. It's the Thursday, October 28th edition. And the story is by Dave Downing, who is a Gazette staff writer, and it's entitled The Ghosts of the Mizpah Hotel. About two months ago, I bellied up to the bar at one of my favorite watering holes, the Mizpah Hotel Casino in Tonopah. My son had come up from Las Vegas to visit, and we were having a late night drink. It was about one in the morning. You see, about one in the morning. These are the times, ladies and gentlemen, where these things occur. A fellow, I would guess to be in his 40s, came up from behind us, sat at the bar next to me. I glanced at him, seeing a dozen or two tattoos on his arm, decided to avoid a conversation. I heard him order a beer. When the beer arrived, he upended the bottle, guzzled down a slug. The bottle hit the bar with a whack, and he looked at me and said, Boy, that's a hell of a hologram they've got in the elevator. Huh? The elevator, he said. I've never been there before. They've got an incredible hologram in there. I don't understand. He said, Oh, I thought you were a local. Miss Paul has a hologram of a beautiful woman dressed in old-fashioned clothing. It's in the elevator, man. It does look real. I told him that I'm a local. I also asked him, uh, told him, uh, there's no hologram in the elevator. He looked at me strangely, drank his beer, and left. A few minutes later, he returned to the bar. He looked upset. You're right, he exclaimed. There is nothing in the elevator. He walked back toward the elevator, and I never saw him again. Had the lady in red appeared again? There are many strange tales from the hallowed ween halls of the Mizbah. The most popular tale involves the murder of a pretty young lady on the fifth floor of the hotel. She was a lady of the evening and became involved in a love triangle. That's according to the assistant manager now of the uh, Mizbah, Sue Harmon. She was caught with another man by the man who was uh, madly in love with her. He stabbed her to death. According to Harmon, there have been many sightings of the lady in red. She resides on the fifth floor, but she'll wander all over the hotel. She loves to pull pranks. She's the one that causes the Kino board to light up. Wait till you hear this. Many employees and visitors to the Mizbaugh claim they've seen the Kino board begin to flash numbers as if a game in progress. The Kino boards at the Mizpah haven't been connected to an electrical source for years. Many claim she can be heard at night, moaning and walking about the floors. She's been known to carry on a conversation with people who only later find out no one is there. Sharon Mitchell of Round Mountain relates a story about the lady in red that occurred to her son, Stuart. When he was working at the hotel during its reconstruction in the late 70s, Sharon was a dealer and a pit boss for the Mizpah at the time. Two of my sons worked after school at the Mizpah, helping to remove walls and do general construction work. Stuart was 14 or 15 years old at the time. One night, Stuart was unusually quiet on the way home. I asked him if he was feeling okay, but he said something weird had happened during work. Stuart told his mother, I was working down in the basement, tearing out a wall. There was a woman with me. She asked me what I was doing, and I told her I was taking the wall down. She told me she didn't want the wall taken out. I asked her who she was, and she said, I live here, and I don't want that wall taken down. Stuart went to get his boss. When they returned, the lady was, of course, no longer there. Sharon told her son that it didn't seem... Uh, much to be upset about. Stuart responded, but Mom, it isn't Halloween, but she was dressed in a costume. According to Sharon, her son then described the lady as wearing a long dress with a bustle that looked like turn-of-the-century clothing. He was very upset. Mitchell said she really didn't believe in ghosts, but if they exist anywhere, they're at the Mizpah. Pat Dennis, a former Mizpah waitress, is one who has personally seen the Kino board begin to light up. 
I don't know if I, I, I don't know for a fact that the Kino board isn't connected to an electrical source, so I can't really say that the lady in red is involved. Who knows? Maybe they left a wire or two connected to some source by accident. And it says she's heard that the lady in red will steal guest shoes, but only if the shoes are red. George Tooley, a former slot mechanic for the Ms. Bond, has seen that board light up the Kino board. It would start playing a game. Usually, it would happen during the graveyard shift. All of a sudden, the numbers would start lighting up as if a game were being played. You'd get about 20 numbers. They'd stay up for a while, then all go out. It happened three times one night. He added that the controls for the Kino board, get this, were removed in 1979 when the hotel went under uh, underwent reconstruction. There are no controls for the board, he said. Waitress Linda Evans has had direct experiences with the lady in red. She's always been kind to me, but she doesn't like men, she said. Evans uh, tells a tale of her involving her son and grandson. Her son was 26, the grandson 13 at the time. I was in the employee's section resting. I'd had only two hours sleep and I was exhausted. My son and grandson arrived and I opened the door for them. They just stood there staring beyond me. It looked as if they were in a trance. I asked them if they were coming in. They just stood and stared. I finally turned around and looked behind me, but I didn't see anything. I turned back to them and my grandson said, that's the first time I ever saw a person without a head. The boy told her they saw a woman dressed in red walk across the room and through a wall. She was holding her head in her hands. They both said they saw the same thing. He also tells a story of a band that had been contracted by the Ms. Bar. They heard stories about the lady in red decided to hold a party in their room. During the party, they began asking for her a sort of seance. The lady not only appeared to them, but bothered them for the rest of the week. She wouldn't leave them alone. There are other stories about different ghosts in the Ms. Bond. Jean Heitman, Ms. Bond, desk clerk, tells about a woman from Las Vegas that had a room on the fifth floor. She woke up and saw a man at the foot of her bed. She began screaming, made quite a bit of racket. Next morning, while she was checking out, she apologized for making such a scene. She explained to me that it was the worst and most realistic nightmare she'd ever had. She went to the Pittman room, uh, that's the Pittman room, for breakfast. She was drinking coffee, glanced at the pictures on the wall. Suddenly, she dropped her coffee cup and began screaming again, That's him. That's the man. She was looking at a picture of Senator Key Pittman. <laughs> According to Jean Bridges, a former waitress, the Nisbaugh used to have a security guard named Otis. Otis was a huge man that others would be afraid of, big macho type. Bridges and others told how Otis was scared to death of the fifth floor. He would refuse to go up there without someone with him. At some time in his Ms. Ball career, he had gone to the fifth floor room because of a loud party. And that's where he saw her. And I'm going to stop there. There's more. But that's, uh, that's a little tale uh, of what's going on here in Nevada. And uh, one of the brothels in um, Pahrump, Nevada, the locals and everybody there is known for a very long time. There is a ghost. Now, I guess Nevada is a, a likely candidate for this sort of thing. I don't know why our history, some of it uh, in the past, violent. And that brings me to why so many ghosts appear, or so many spirits appear to remain here on this world. I think they can't go anywhere else. Frequently, when, when a death is unexpected, early, violent, when there's something utterly unsatisfied here on earth, unrequited love frequently will bring a spirit that seems to stay. 
other reasons. I don't know it all. I just know that I've heard the stories, and this morning you're going to hear them. That's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about ghosts, poltergeists, spirits. And one of the reasons that I've found this topic through my life so fascinating, and I always return to it, is because for a very long time I've been on a search, a hard search, for some sort of proof of life after death. Now obviously if spirits are remaining on earth or here at all, that means there is some sort of life after death. This may be an aberration. It may be, uh, but, but nevertheless, it certainly is, you must admit, an indication that there is something that comes after. So, if you have a ghost story for us this morning, a real ghost story, if you're seeing a ghost or being bothered by one now, we want to hear from you. And that's a little taste to get you started. I now await your story, and we'll be right back. All right, uh, if you're ready, I think I am. And if it starts to get scary enough, I will extinguish my lights and, uh, and sort of get in the spirit of things. I've done that every year. I'm not allowed to bring a candle in here. No fire. But uh, I do extinguish the lights and kind of get myself into the mood. Here we go. Wild card line three. Uh, good morning. You are on the air. Thank you, sir. Uh, this story revolves around a, a, a historical um, a building in the town of Provincetown, Massachusetts, which is a, um, a town that's uh, out on the very tip of Cape Cod. Um, a number of years ago, this is going back about 20 years ago, my... Uh, my uncle was a, a former California uh, contractor, a builder, who uh, took a job as a caretaker in uh, this uh, building called the Provincetown Inn. Oh, yes. And uh, he was there basically living rent-free to uh, do some re restoration, renovation on this old building. And uh, this is a guy who watched, you know, the hockey games, and didn't care about ghost stories, didn't believe in that sort of thing. but. As he and his wife were living there for a while, they began to see more and more evidence of what I guess you would call poltergeist activity. And this was in the... Um, Pranks, things flying around, that's yes, right. Yes, absolutely. Uh, they would be watching a hockey game, and uh, uh, his wife would be cooking uh, some uh, spaghetti sauce in the kitchen, and they'd be watching together. She'd come out, and, and uh, she'd leave the wooden spoon in the pot, and they'd hear this clatter in the kitchen, and they'd both run out there, and the, the spoon would be across the room, and spaghetti sauce would be all over the place. And uh, then they began hearing footsteps in the uh, upper story of the, uh, the inn uh, at all hours of the day and night and would rush upstairs to see who was there because this was generally in the off season when they didn't have any uh, people renting rooms and so forth. And, and there was never anyone there. And uh, on one occasion they uh, uh, had um, some footsteps that were wandering around and he got his gun off the rack above the hearth, and the stairs uh, were coming down uh, the wall just on the other side of the living room, and there was a door in the entryway that was uh, at the bottom of the stairs, and this separated the stairwell from where they were watching television, and uh, as the uh, footsteps came down the stairs, he said to his wife, as soon as the footsteps get to the bottom, open the door, and I'll be ready with the gun, and she opened the door, and there was no one there. And so we began hearing stories about this. My family and I lived uh, near Springfield, Massachusetts at the time. And so my brother and I, who were big fans of a television program with Gary Collins, it was called uh, The Sixth Sense or something. That was about the time that this uh, was going on. And we were all hyped up on this paranormal activity. And so we, um, we decided we were going to go there with our cameras and try and get pictures of ghosts and this kind of stuff. And we had some really frightening experiences. Um, we uh, 
uh, began uh, watching my uncle and his uh, wife as they were using a Ouija board, you know, which has the, the letters of the alphabet and a number of numbers. And oh, what, I know about Ouija boards. Yes and no and this kind of thing. And, and uh, it turned out that leading up to this particular weekend, my brother and I were there, they had actually done some history.